Hey guys and welcome back to another video and I hope you are okay on that side of the screen and today finally I managed to get some time four days ago to install Shelly E. Today I'm going to share with you all the information that I've got, all the data, but the question is, is it the best smart power or energy monitor available on the market for the price? And hopefully by the end of the video you will be able to tell, in my opinion, at least that I'm aware, there isn't anything comparable in terms of price. Now the system that I will be comparing is with the Weeby that I've got right over there. It's a great system, but it costs three times more than the Shelly EM. So we are talking about 120 euros for one clamp and then if we need two, uh, an extra 10 euros or so. Shelly EM costs 40 euros for this set. I will leave a link down below. And then if we want one for the solar PV, we will add 10 euros more or less. So it's a huge difference. And we will be able to see that in terms of results, the differences are not that huge so probably it is great and one thing that i would like to say is that I'm, i don't regret purchasing things like i did on the weeby one year and a half ago but if it was today and if i had uh, known this product before probably today this would be my main power meter on a daily basis because it's great just awesome with a lot of possibilities so having that in mind First of all, we will cover a little bit of the installation. Obviously, if you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll try to answer as best as I can. Just a small note here, we are dealing with electricity. So if you are not sure of what you are doing, please, please call someone that knows a friend or electrician and it will do this really easily, but keeping everything safe. So just have this in mind. Electricity is something that we don't or we can't play around because results may be very bad. Having that in mind, if you are okay with that, then it's a really easy installation. To power the Shell EM, all we need is a face and a neutral wire. Basically, that is it. And then we just need to uh, put in the cables for the clamp. In my particular case, two clamps. So two wires each clamp. And as you can see, black and red, black and red, and that's it. After that, we will go to our circuit breaker, shut everything down, and I just need to connect the face and the neutral wire to power the Shelly EM. For those of you that are just using for consumption and you don't have a solar production and just want to control your uh, power consumption, then you just need one clamp and put it on the main wire that comes from the, the circuit breaker. Have in mind when you see some images you will see four clamps. That's because I've got two clamps for the Shell EM and then two clamps for my other system which is the WeB system. Now one thing for those of you that have solar production and not always are able to achieve the same as I have. I've got two solar systems and both of them I did connect centrally to my main circuit breaker because that was the best way that I could find and that I wanted to centralize everything. But sometimes we need to put the solar PV uh, injection in some other area of the home. And a few videos ago, I'll try to leave a link down below or you can search the channel for Shelly 1PM. That is a great add-on for someone that cannot put their solar PV on the same circuit breaker. So my suggestion here to solve that issue, and I've said sometimes in Facebook and in Instagram, for those of you that have been asking questions, is we can put the Shelly EM on the main circuit breaker, and then we can put the Shelly 1PM on the solar production, and then the software will make the connection, and we will be able to see what we are producing and what we are consuming. So this is a great solution at an affordable price. We are talking about 40 euros and then the Shelly 1PM is roughly 13 euros more or less. Now, once we have everything, just need to power up our circuit breaker. And after that, just use the app on our mobile phone and everything will be working. Now, I'll show you guys a few images right over here on my computer, but have in mind that the application on the phone or on a tablet is much more pleasant than on a computer. Nonetheless, on the computer, we can use the Shelly Cloud, which is great. I don't need to have any emulator or Android or iOS and things like that. I can just go for a browser and have all the information right over here, which is just great. So looking at the app here on the computer, I will have at this moment some information right over here stating that I'm producing more than what I'm consuming. In this particular case, I'm offering to the grid 583 
watts of power. And as you can see, I've got two Shelly 1PMs that I've shown on the last videos. Uh, this one is producing 940 at the moment, this one 727. And then I've got the uh, electric circuit breaker right over here showing me the uh, amount that I'm spending and the amount that I'm producing. Now, one of the options that we will be able to turn on and that it's very useful in the software, the software has all these options which are very thoughtful, is that if I've got several devices being measured and if I add the Shelly EM to the collection of those devices, which is the case that I've got on the kitchen for my water heater, for example, and I've got a few more devices, but I do not want them to totalize and duplicating value. So I can remove them from the total consumption of the house. And what we are watching right now here is that these, for example, are not going to, to sum up with this one right over here because it would be a duplicate. I just want to know how much I'm generating from each of my uh, uh, solar PV panels, but I don't want them to add up to the Shelly EM total consumption and total production. So this is a great option. Now let's uh, move into the uh, Shelly EM and what we can see right over here, if I press the consumption, which is this one here, it will show me the current consumption, the voltage and reactive power and power factor and so on and so forth. As you can see, it will be refreshing. By the way, one great option is that if I go to settings and there are a lot of settings that I'm not going to cover today, we will leave that for further videos and questions that you guys will ask right over here. But I will uh, answer this, which is we have a lot of options. We can do a lot. We have a lot to discover and to work with. <laughs> but device information, we have the IP address right over here. So if I go to my browser and just put that IP address, this is the info that I'm going to get. And as you can see, they are being refreshed. At this moment, I'm uh, spending 1,631 1, watts and spending or producing 1,605 watts. And I can just go right over here and download it for a Excel spreadsheet, for example. And once I've got that spreadsheet, the possibilities are enormous because I can do graphics, I can do whatever I want. This is a great tip that one of the readers gave to me two nights ago and I thought that I would include right over here. Now, what we have uh, on this basic menu, besides all the options that we have right over here, which we are not going to cover, so the video will have a lot of time, but we can see, for example, uh, the last 24 hours in terms of our production. And yes, I do believe that the app can be improved if we shorten this, but we have a solution for that using Home Assistant, which we will be there in just a few moments. But besides having uh, these hours right over here, I can also see it by week. And this was the first day that I did implement, June 10th, and then uh, I've got it working for five days now, more or less. And I'm going to use these values, at least these three days to compare some values with you. And if I go to the other menu, uh, I've got two browser right over here, the second clamp, which is the solar PV production. I can see also how much I'm producing from my two solar PV uh, units together. And if I go to weekly, I can see how much I did produce on these days right over here. So it was a rainy day, as you can see right over here. I can also go monthly, yearly, and we will see by month. This will be great once we have more data and more data and we can, can compare month by month on the several years and so on and so forth and also have a custom option right over here. Now, for this part of the video, it will matter uh, this values because we will compare with my other solution so that we can see the margin of error that we will have. And before we move on, for the last two years or so, I've been testing and doing a lot of readings with several devices. And the one that gives me better results is the Weeby, which is the one that I'll be sharing with you. Actually, is this one right over here comparing with the Shelly EM right over here. And just to say that all of them will have a margin of error. And if you ask me, hey Robert, which one is more accurate? Because you already have the system for a few days and you've been comparing. To be honest, I believe that none of them are 100% accurate because we are using clamps and both of them will have a margin of error. So I would suggest that you look at the values that I'm going to show you and somewhere in between the middle, there will be the correct value that we will have at the end of the week, at the end of the month when we do our readings with the energy company. So having that in mind, let's go at and look at some values. So I'm going to the Weeby 
uh, solution right over here. I'm going to, sh to to refresh. And once again, this is a great solution. Uh, just the problem is that the price is three times more. Uh, I really enjoy it. But um, if you ask me, hey Robert, do you justify, now that you are aware of a cheaper solution, do you justify the price? It's really hard to justify 120 euros when I can achieve more or less the same with 40 euros. And well, but this is something that each one of us will have to decide. Now, I'm going to use the software to measure. I'm going to day 11th of June. And what I'm going to look at is the total right over here consumed was, according to Shelly M, 32 kilowatts, 32.1 kilowatts. And the Wii will give me a result of 32.1. So we have a deviation right over here. If we look at the generated energy was 16.42. And if I go to the Shelly production, on the 11th it was 1633 so there is a slight deviation and some days will be a little bit less some days will be a little bit more on both systems uh, let's look at day 12 and if i look right over here we'll have 2766 and if we look at day 12 we have 2686 so there we go once again a little bit of margin and if we look at the production on the shell em on the 12th i did produce 22.2 four and on here 22.43 so once again we have a margin and then uh, today is the 14th so let's look at yesterday 32.43 and if I go to Shelly Cloud yesterday was the 13 31 408 and what we had 32 43 so almost one kilowatt of difference right over here not not one but 800 watt hours of difference right over here and if i go to the production 24 76 and here we've got 24 44 so the margin over here is always a little bit bigger in terms of consumption than in production but once we do the sum of all at the end of the week more or less the difference is not that huge because sometimes it will oscillate now having that in mind when we look at the VB right over here that is one thing that I love and that is the graphics as you can see the graphics are really nice right over here completely different from what we have because we have a sum even if I go to 24 hours we have a sum right over here per hour and this uh, in my opinion is not enough so this is an area that the software can improve nonetheless we have the solution right now even before the uh, Shelly company produces a little bit better improvement in terms of software if I go to home assistant and if we look at this graphic right over here which is in real time or if I go to home assistant right over here you can see that I already have a solution Actually, let me show you this one right over here. And it shows me the six last hours. But if I want to check out the last 24 hours, because I did put on these graphics yesterday and I got a little bit of production yet. You can see the yellow line right over here is the production and the green line is the power consumption. So then the night and then this morning when the, the sun came up. This curve right over here already explained in one of my videos. It's really fun, this curve showing the limitations of a central unit uh, inverter. But uh, what it matters is that I can check minute by minute what I'm producing and what I'm spending in terms of the grid. And as you can see, some clouds right over here. So it gives me a lot of more information. So on one hand, the software, it's not as complete as the Weeby solution that we have and we have seen right over here, which will show me some uh, info that is very relevant. So if I can do my calculations and so on and so forth, but at the same time, we have an integration of software that can be implemented on Home Assistant. And then with Home Assistant, we can do a lot. Actually, I've got a few automations right over here. If I go to configuration and automations, uh, and I've got this for the swimming pool, which is turned off at this moment. But this just to state that when my solar PV reaches 2,400 watts on production, turn on the swimming pool pump but if there's a cloud and it will go below 2200 watts just turn off the pump the same will happen with my my water heater right over here once it's above 1500 turn it on once it's below 1200 turn it off and we can do a lot more we can do with conditions just turn it on if the power uh, production is above x but this power consumption is below y 
and we have a lot right over here that we can do with home assistant actually i've done a, a, quite a few videos and i will keep on doing them because i do believe that this is the smartest way to implement especially for those that have solar pv and want to get the most out of it using smart devices such as this one and then such as other devices that we have seen to control water heaters and solar pv but i'm diverging to an area that i didn't want to go this was just an example if i go to overview here i've got uh, a few graphics and a few uh, measurements in terms of shelly this is actually one that it's right over there with the temperature of the office at this moment uh, the shelly em at this moment is uh, consuming this and generating this or measuring and this is the shelly 1 p.m shelly 1 p.m on my both solar systems and then just a few examples right over here of what we can total consumption for example and so on and so forth and the graphic that i was talking about regarding the graphics we have a few more basic graphics right over here but honestly i prefer this one this kind of graphic that it's it's completely different actually i was playing with grafana to actually get these graphics and I will do a few more videos about this once I get a little bit more used to it because I'm a beginner on Grafana as well so I'm learning with you the community and I'm passing the info that I learn every day and guys basically this is it in terms of the software what I can say compared to the Weebie is that uh, it's a little bit weaker but using home assistant we will have more or less the same results with great achievements and of course with great potential I also compared with my digital meters that I've got on the circuit breaker and as you can see those are also very accurate although they are cheap and easy to use they are not smart but uh, it's accurate comparing with the Shelly EM and also with the Weeby solution so that was another reading so if you ask me hey Robert do you recommend to get this after the readings and comparisons that you have done definitely because we will always have a margin of error with this system or any other but if it gives me a margin of error that shows me the reality and tells me okay this is as close as it gets from the reality but you know that it will not be 100% precise then definitely yes totally worth for the price and it has a lot a lot of potential of what we can do right over here one other thing that I love it's the size it's really small so for those that have a, a circuit breaker that it's not that huge it will be great to put anywhere and even those that have older circuit breakers I do believe that it will fit anywhere finally one of the most positives that i've showed right over here is this software which is really complete and honestly we don't need to mess around with firmwares I, I don't feel the need to change the firmware although it's possible but i don't feel the need because the software gives me a lot of options now on the downside the only thing that i can find in terms of difference from the other system that i've got is that the graphics are not as complete as we can see right over here but at the same time with the home assistant we can get very similar results so and this is it hope that the video was helpful to decide if this is the system for you or not and if it was don't forget that usual thumbs up my name is roberto george and as always i'll see you guys on the next one